Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to show you how you can use VNAV to get yourself down to traffic pattern altitude without a lot of hard work. Let's get started. So right now while we're flying into Danbury, uh, we're sitting over here, Woo, man is this high for a 172, this is making me nervous. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be flying down into Danbury from our current position. Now what I want to do is know when am I supposed to actually start my descent so I can get myself down to that traffic pattern altitude. Well, the first challenge we're going to have to figure out is what is the traffic pattern altitude? Oh, that's one of those little details that sometimes people forget. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly go over here. I'm a KDXR, uh, go away, KDXR, T uh, traffic uh, elevation. I'll go ahead and type that in real fast. Bring that sucker up. Elevation is, let's see, 456.7 feet. So that's going to be a 1500 foot altitude. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to this page real quick. I'm going to go ahead and swing to my next page. And of course, we have all of our critical information as far as our flight. We can come here and make our adjustments. So I'm going to press this little button real quickly here, and I'm going to select my destination. And you'll notice it's got a little box here for feet. So what I'm going to do is move over here, and I'm going to select the traffic pattern altitude for this particular airport. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be doing an altitude of 1,500 feet here. So it's 1500, zero, zero, and that's going to be my traffic pattern altitude. So now I'm just going to press enter, enter, and you can see it's going to give me a flight path angle. I can do three degrees, I can do 10 degrees, pretty much any angle I want. It really does not matter. Uh, if I really want to blow some ear drums, though, of course, you know me, I'm going to go ahead and press it to five degrees. And what it'll actually do is it'll estimate how long it will take to actually get to that particular point. And one of the cool things you can do normally in the regular one is you can go over here and actually set the vertical speed target. Can't do that today. So I'm perfectly happy with that. That works really, really well for me. What you're also going to notice is you're going to have this little option that says VNAV Direct. And you're also going to notice over here that we have a pre-selected altitude of actually zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come down here. And this is going to be the desired VNAV altitude. And this is going to be our actual altitude. Keep in mind, whenever you're working with VNAV, you have to keep this number smaller than this number. Otherwise, it will not cross that point. It's just kind of one of those little idiot checks to make sure you didn't accidentally. So I'm going to come down here and press the VNAV Direct button. And I'm going to swing up top. I'm actually going to swing VNAV itself. Now you're going to get this little light on here that's going to say V path. Now the reason that particular item is going to say V path is on a cancel the oh, cancel console console on account of the fact that our aircraft is now armed to now travel a V nav path. Uh, if this is not lit, that means you were not selected it correctly, or more likely this V nav target has not been properly set as well. Now with that set, if you actually come back over here and look on the chart, you're going to see you have a brand new option here that's actually going to say TOD, referring to top of descent. Now, it's really kind of fun to play with here. Let me go ahead and hide this. Is if we come back here to this FPA, if we want to actually reduce how mercilessly, murder, murder, I can't speak today, sorry, how bad our ears are going to be, we can actually adjust that path. And you can actually see dynamically where that descent point is going to be. Let's say we want to use a four degree path, for example. I'm just going to press enter. Perfectly fine with that. I've already had VNAP direct. It already knows we're going down to 1500 feet, so we're pretty much pretty much ready to rock here. So what I'll do now is I'll go ahead and dun da da bum ba ba da you know, of course, uh, traveling by map is all they call it. Oh, I wish I could do this in a real plane. Man, that would save some uh, some really, really tedious flying. I'm just making little sound effects to kind of make it more interesting for us. There we go. Now, what you'll notice now is this little tiny carrot has suddenly appeared on our screen and is starting to make its way down so that it goes ahead and crosses this point. When it hits this point right here, that's going to tell the computer, the automatic pilot, to begin its descent down to our desired altitude of 1,500 feet, which is what we selected for the actual traffic pattern altitude. Now, looking over here, do you see how this V path is just illuminated? That's simply giving us a heads up that it has begun its descent downwards. Now, the cool thing here is it's going to be descending at a four degree flight path angle. Uh, that's what it's referring to. And now what you have to kind of play the game here is that the speed is going to determine this vertical speed. So if I pull my throttle back, uh, let's say I drop it quite a bit, we'll come right to the bottom. We'll do about, let's say, 2300 RPM-ish. And again, it's a 172, so it's fairly forgiving. You're going to notice that this number is going to slowly change as, of course, we're not blowing our eardrums. 850 feet is pretty extreme. Now, because we've got this descent started, and now we've already crossed that particular point, and we're descending at this four degrees, we know it's going to take about six minutes to get down to our actual traffic pattern altitude. Six minutes later, no, just about. So now you can see that as we're getting right into Danbury, we're already just about at the altitude we desired it to be. I can see my airport uh, visual right in front of me. And I can also see coming over here on the right that everything is ready to rock. I've got my speed set. Everything is pretty much ready to go ahead and enter into a nice little traffic pattern. And we're gonna be hitting that point at exactly that spot. Now, one of you immediately are gonna say, is it possible to actually design a waypoint that's a little outside of the airport that we can then utilize to get to the correct altitude and then fly the rest of the landing approach? 
The answer is absolutely yes. And that's one of the things that makes the G1000 so incredibly useful is the fact that all those features are built right in, which makes it much, much easier for us as pilots to not have to stress about that minutia and concentrate instead on things such as looking out for traffic, you know, while making sure your uh, checklists are being followed, communicating and all those other aspects of piloting, which makes it so interesting. Now, remember, VNAV cannot go up. It can only go down in this airplane. So when you're planning any of these particular options, you've got to remember that aspect of it. Otherwise, it's going to give you little challenges. Now, another cool thing you can do in the real G1000 that's a little tough to do with this version is you can actually create an offset. So you can actually order yourselves to be at a different position at a different time. So that's actually really, really wild. But again, it's pretty cool. So as always, uh, and like I said, a pretty solid use of that tool, and you can use it to cross waypoints at specific points, but getting that traffic pattern altitude right as you arrive is just so satisfying. Enjoy.